is a really easy lesson. I'm going to teach you how to calculate the protons, neutrons, and electrons in an electrically neutral atom. And that just means it doesn't have a charge. We're going to worry about that later, but um, for now, we're just looking at the atoms just like you view them on the periodic table. So quick review of atomic structure just in case you've not had this in a while. Um, there are three subatomic particles in the atom. There are protons, neutrons, and electrons. So when you hear the term subatomic particle, that's what we are referring to. Protons have a relative mass of one. We often say one AMU atomic mass unit. They have a positive charge and they are located in the nucleus. Neutrons also have a relative mass of one AMU. They are neutral and they are also located in the nucleus. And then we have electrons. Relatively speaking, we say that electrons have a mass of zero. They are negative and they are located in what we like to call the electron cloud. Now you've heard me use the um, term relative mass a couple times or relatively speaking. When we're looking at an atom, your proton and your neutron are the two larger particles in that atom. Electrons are just super tiny. Um, they're so small, in fact, that relative to the size of the atom, we generally just say they have a mass of zero. Now, technically, electrons do have a mass, but when we're looking at calculating protons, neutrons, and electrons, we um, kind of ignore that mass of the electron. It's kind of like your eyelashes have a mass, but if you lose an eyelash, you're not going to go re-weigh because you think your weight, your body weight's been affected by the loss of that eyelash. If you lose an eyelash, technically it did have a mass, but compared to the mass of your body, it's really pretty negligible. So that's how we are looking at the electron today. So when you hear me say, relatively speaking, that's what I mean. Relative to the size of an atom, an electron basically just has a mass of zero. Now, just as another refresher... When you have your atom, you got your nucleus in the middle, it's surrounded by this electron cloud. This nucleus is very small, it is very compact, it is super dense. Like, it is crazy dense. Just remember, all that energy harnessed inside the nucleus is um, where we get our nuclear energy. And we get lots and lots of energy from just a tiny bit of matter. So this nucleus is just packed super tight, super dense. So we say that this accounts for most of the mass of the atom. Most of the mass of the atom is located in the nucleus. Um, this contains your protons and your neutrons. Now, all scattered around this nucleus, orbiting the nucleus, we say orbit, it's not just a circular orbit. You're going to learn more about that later. But this is where the electrons hang out. This is the home of the electron cloud. And this accounts for most of the volume of the atom. And again, this is where our electrons live. To put it simply, think about the atom as fluffy, like a fluffy cotton ball with a little bitty lead-like BB in the middle. That BB would be your nucleus. Heavy um, for its size, very dense, very compact. And then you've got this fluffy area kind of around the outside, lots of empty space, and that is your electron cloud. That little bit of background will help you understand the math as we go through it today, and the math is real easy. So um, when we look at the periodic table, we can get some very valuable information about um, all sorts of things. But today, we're looking at it in terms of counting our protons, neutrons, and electrons. This is a typical um, element from the periodic table. This is carbon. 
And you can see that carbon has an atomic number of six. So this is the atomic number. And carbon has an atomic mass of 12.011. Another thing to remember that keeps it simple, the small whole number is always the atomic number. So this is your small, smaller of the two, smaller whole number. The larger decimal number is going to be your atomic mass. So this is your larger number. And that's because this atomic number tells you how many protons your atom has. It also tells you for an electrically neutral atom how many electrons the atom has. This number tells you how many protons and neutrons combined the atom has. So if this 6 represents just the protons, and this 12.011 represents the protons and neutrons together, then it makes sense if you take the difference between these two numbers, you're going to get your number of neutrons. So what we find is when you're calculating protons, neutrons, and electrons, the atomic number is your number of protons. It is also your number of electrons for a neutral atom. So, you know, this lesson is talking about calculating protons, neutrons, and electrons, but you can see there's really not much of any calculation involved here. So the atomic number tells you how many protons, and it also represents the number of electrons if the atom is neutral, meaning it doesn't have a charge. You're not going to have to worry about charges in this lesson today. Everything's neutral. And because the atomic mass represents the number of protons and neutrons together, if you subtract the atomic number from the atomic mass, you get the number of neutrons. Now, one more thing I want to point out, and this is just a technicality. You have to round this to a whole number before subtracting because we can't have just part of a neutron. Once you round the atomic mass to a whole number, technically we refer to it as mass number. So atomic number and mass number are kind of the same thing, but mass number just indicates you have rounded it off to a whole number, and that's what we'll be doing today. Last thing I want to point out before we just do examples, this is just one way you might see this represented on the periodic table. I'm going to be using this today, and on this version, you'll see that the atomic number is actually in the lower left corner, and the atomic mass is actually centered at the top. On this one, the atomic numbers on the upper right and the mass number or atomic mass is centered on the bottom. It doesn't matter. All periodic tables are going to have little bitty bits of different information. Um, these two pieces of information will be on it. You just may see them in different places. So you can't always say, oh, it's the number on the top right. This number could be anywhere. You need to know atomic number is the small whole number and that atomic mass is the decimal number. You now know everything you need to know to calculate protons, neutrons, and electrons. So we're gonna practice a few of these and you are gonna be an expert before you know it. So what you might wanna do at this point is maybe pause the video and take a moment to um, copy this chart so that you've got it for your notes because it will be a great reference. So let's look at what we're going to be filling in here. Here are your atoms we're going to be working with. We're going to write down the atomic number. We're going to write down the mass number, and you'll notice that we're going to go ahead and round that off, and that's why I just called it mass number. And then we are going to calculate the protons, neutrons, and electrons. A couple things to make your life easier. Atomic number is the number of protons, always. That will never change. If the atomic number changes, then you have a different substance altogether because the atomic number identifies that substance. If the atom is neutral, this is also 
going to tell you your number of electrons. For the number of neutrons, we're going to say mass minus atomic number. And that's all we do. So let's start getting ourselves familiar with the periodic table. The first one is carbon, and we just looked at that. Carbon is located right here. Um, carbon has an atomic number of six and a mass of 12.01. So we're gonna put six for the atomic number and we're gonna round that mass to 12. Because carbon has an atomic number of six, it has six protons and six electrons. To get neutrons, I'm gonna say mass minus atomic number and we also have six neutrons. The reason I'm showing the math here is because if you're a high school student and two or three years from now you take chemistry in college, if you don't use this between now and then, you may forget it. And if you look at this, you can go, oh yeah, now I remember what I did. It's always good to have this down for reference. The next one is iron. And you know what? I'm gonna actually write the symbols in here too. It's time to get used to those. Iron symbol is F E. Right here it is on the periodic table. Iron has an atomic number of 26 and it has a mass number of 55.85. So we're gonna write 26 for the atomic number. 55.85 is going to round up to 56. I have 26 protons and 26 electrons and 56 minus 26 equals 30 neutrons. And it never fails. I'll have a student, maybe they're taking a test or something, they'll run up to my desk and say, I study, but I can't remember if it's atomic number minus atomic mass or atomic mass minus atomic number. And I usually say, just take a breath and think about what you just said. It's going to have to be the big number minus the little number. So if you ever get confused, just remember that for your number of neutrons. Chlorine is Cl, and chlorine has an atomic number of 17, and it has a mass of 35.45. So the atomic number is 17. The mass we're going to round to 35. I have 17 protons and 17 electrons because that is the atomic number, and 35 minus 17 equals 8 neutrons. I'm going to imagine at this point most of you are like, that is easy, I've got it. Um, doing the rest of those is probably a little bit of overkill. However, we're going to do them anyhow. We're going to drive this point home and you'll never forget it. So you may want to stop at this point and fill this out yourself real quick. Just do a quick self-assessment, make sure you've got it, and um, then you can pick back up with the video and check your answers. So I'm going to work through the rest of these. Calcium is CA. Calcium is a metal. It's located right here. Atomic number of 20. Mass is 40.08, so we're going to round that mass to 40. Atomic number is 20. That means I have 20 protons, 20 electrons, mass minus atomic number is 20. So we have 20 neutrons. Sodium is Na. Also a metal way over here on the left side of the periodic table. We have an atomic number of 11 and we have a mass of 22.99 which we round to 23. We have 11 protons, we have 11 electrons, and we have 23 minus 11 which is 12 neutrons. Gold is AU. Down here near the bottom, gold's very heavy. Gold has an atomic number of 79, and it has a mass number of 196.97, which is going to round up to 197. So 79, 197, I've got 79 protons, 79 electrons, 197 minus 79 
equals 118 neutrons. Gold's got a big old nucleus. That's why it's so heavy. Um, it's very dense. That's how people pan for gold. Back in the old days, people would fill their pans full of dirt and um, shake them around and dunk them underwater and keep shaking and throwing the dirt off the top. And that gold went straight to the bottom because it was one of the most dense things in the pan. Just a little, little tip for you there, just a little bit of information. The next one is magnesium. Magnesium symbol is Mg. Magnesium is also a metal located right here in group two of the periodic table. It has an atomic number of 12. It has a mass of 24.30, so we're going to say 24, 12 protons, 12 electrons, 24 minus 12 is 12 neutrons. Mercury, right here, one of the only metals that is a liquid at room temperature. Mercury has a atomic number of 80 and it has a mass of 200.59, which is going to round to 200. Oh, by the way, mercury symbol is Hg. 80, 200 for the mass. We have 80 protons, 80 electrons, 200 minus 80 equals 120. Helium is HE. Did you guys know there's a helium shortage right now? That's an interesting little fact. To look that up. Um, lots of good reading about that. Um, helium has an atomic number of 2, and it has a mass of about 4.00. So we're going to say 2 for the atomic number, round the mass to 4. We have 2 protons, 2 electrons, 4 minus 2 equals 2 neutrons. And last but not least, lithium. Um, very valuable element for us. If you like your electronics, most of those things have lithium batteries. Very important. Lithium's used in all kinds of things. Um, lithium has an atomic number of three. It's right over here. It's our lightest metal. And it has a mass of 6.94, so we're going to round that to seven. We have three protons, three electrons. Seven minus three is four neutrons. So I'm going to slide all these answers back so you can take one more look at them. You can see that calculating protons, neutrons, and electrons for a neutral atom is super easy. Just remember we are basing this math on the fact that a proton and a neutron have about the same mass. They're considered large subatomic particles compared to the mass of an electron, which again, relatively speaking, is zero. That's why we were able to ignore that mass, and that's what made our math so simple. But don't forget, an electron actually does have a mass. It's just very, very tiny. So I'll follow this up with a lesson on how to calculate protons, neutrons, and electrons for isotopes. Um, it's just as easy. You've just got to watch for the details. So if you're looking at these videos, hopefully you're seeing this one first and you're looking at the isotope one next.